morning, everyone. How are you? The beautiful day that the Lord has made, isn't it? I mean, we've had such a stretch of weather, and I was talking about earlier with these guys. I've been riding my motorcycle for days and days and days because uh, my time's going to run short. Eventually, we're going to run out of it, so I figured I'd want to take, take advantage of it, right? So, like I said, what a, what a beautiful day the Lord has made. Welcome again all to our service. Um, some announcements we have, you can read them in a bulletin. Uh, probably the highlight is to uh, grab the survey that we have at each entrance here. Uh, make sure you fill it out and return it by, I believe it's October 15th or something, that Sue wants it back. So please do that as soon as you can. Um, also, for a couple of you that are new, there are some welcome cards that we have in the pews and on each end. Uh, please put your name on them and put them in uh, the basket so we uh, know you're, we're here. Okay, that's about the end of that. All right, with that, um, we'll start with our opening hymn, Praise the One Who Breaks the Darkness. I'm sure many of you, like me, uh, every morning follow our devotion uh, in our portals of prayer. And uh, yesterday, when I opened up my portals of prayer to do my devotion, uh, I noticed that it was uh, the Feast of the Holy Cross. And of course, I had to look that up and see. Of course, we know that we're looking at the cross and we're, and as we lift it up and, and what Jesus, uh, he died uh, for us, uh, for our sins, uh, for our redemption, of course. But uh, of course, I had to also look it up and see what else uh, history had for the Holy Cross, the Feast of the Holy Cross. And on this day, it's also called the Triumph of the Cross, Elevation of the Cross, Holy Cross Day, Holy Rood Day, or Rudimus. The liturgy of the cross is a triumphant liturgy. When Moses lifted up the bronze serpent over the people, it was a foreshadowing of the salvation through Jesus when he was lifted up on the cross. Our Mother Church sings of the Triumph of the Cross, the instrument of our redemption. To follow Christ, we must take up his cross follow him and become obedient until death, even if it means death on the cross. We identify with Christ on the cross and become co-redeemers, sharing in his cross. We made the sign of the cross before prayer that help us fix our minds and hearts to God. After prayer, we make the sign of the cross to keep close to God. During trials and temptations, our strength and protection is the sign of the cross. At baptism, we are sealed with the sign of the cross, signifying the fullness of redemption that we belong to Christ. So let us look to the cross frequently and realize that when we make the sign of the cross, we give our entire self to God, mind, soul, heart, body, will, and thoughts. So with that, 
we be, as we remember our baptism and we begin all good things in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, how I love your law. Your commands make me wiser than my enemies. How sweet are your words to my taste. All of Scripture is God-breathed and useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. Yet so often we have despised God's Word and failed to gladly hear and learn from it. For this and all our sins, we bow before God and humbly ask His forgiveness. Together. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I'm by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and deeds. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God gave his word that you may believe that Jesus Christ is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. The scripture testifies about Jesus who lived a perfect life for you and me and died on the cross to pay for all of our sins and rose again to assure us of our salvation. Therefore, to those who believe on his name and he gives the power to become the children of God and has promised them his Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Blessed Lord, you have caused all Holy Scripture to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart, that by the patience and comfort of your Holy Word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated for the readings. Good morning. The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 50. The Lord God has given me the tongue of those who are taught that I may know how to sustain with a word him who is weary. Morning by morning he awakens. He awakens my ear to hear as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I turned not backward. I gave my back to those who strike and my cheeks to those who pull out the beard. I hid not my face from disgrace and splitting. But the Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord God helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Behold, all of them will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. Who among you fears the Lord and obeys the voice of his servant? Let him who walks in darkness and has no light trust in the name of the Lord and rely on his God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to be to God. We read Psalm 116 responsibly. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my pleas for mercy. The snares of death encompassed me. The pangs of Sheol lay hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is merciful. Lord, 
Return, O my soul, to your rest, for the Lord is dead bountifully with you. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The epistle is from James chapter 3. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness, for we all stumble in many ways. And if anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man, but also to bridle his whole body. If we put bits in the mouths of horses so that they obey us, we guide our whole bodies as well. Look at the ships also. Though they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are guided by a very small rudder, wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great things. How great a forest is set ablaze by such a small fire, and the tongue is a fire, a world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among your members, staining the whole body, setting on fire the entire course of life, and set on fire by hell. Where every kind of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by mankind, but no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of poison, with it we bless our Lord and Father, and with it we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brother, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and salt water? Can a fig tree, my brothers, bear olives, or a grapevine produce figs? Neither can a salt pond yield fresh water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise as we sing the doxology before the gospel. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavens. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you for that. We haven't done that in a long time. The Holy Gospel, according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. When they came to the disciples and they saw a great crowd around them and the scribes arguing with them. And immediately all the crowd, when they, when they saw him, were greatly amazed and ran up to Jesus and greeted him. And he asked them, what are you arguing about with them? And someone from the crowd answered him, teacher, I brought my son to you, for he has a spirit that makes him mute. And whenever it seizes him, it throws him down and he foams and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. So I asked your disciples to cast it out, and they were not able. And he answered them, O oh, faithless generation, how long am I to be with you? And how long am I to bear with you? Bring him to me. And they brought the boy to him. And when the spirit saw him, immediately it convulsed the boy, and he fell to the ground and rolled about, foaming at the mouth. And Jesus asked his father, How long has this been happening to him? And he said, From childhood and it has often cast him into fire and into water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, if you can, all things are possible for one who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said, I believe, help my unbelief. And when Jesus saw that a crowd came running together and rebuked a unclean spirit saying to it, you moot and deaf spirit, I command you to come out of him and never again enter him. And after crying out and convulsing him terribly, it came out. And the boy was like a corpse that most of them said, he's dead. 
But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he had entered the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could we not cast it out? And he said to them, This kind cannot be driven out by anything but prayer. This is the gospel of our Lord. Please be seated for the hymn of the day. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Following the gospel reading from Mark 9, we heard the line from verse 29 when Jesus explains to the disciples, this kind cannot be driven out by anything but prayer. I don't know about you, but when I read the gospel, this, kind of, this statement at the very end really jumped out at me. And if I was one of the disciples, I would be dumbfounded and confused by what Jesus said. Now, if you look in the Bible, in uh, Matthew 17, there's another account of this story. And beginning in verse 19, when the disciples came to Jesus in private and asked, why couldn't we drive it out? He replied, because you have so little faith. Truly, I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. Jeez, I can see them thinking now. The smoke come out of the air, the gears grinding, and they're thinking to myself, geez, we're your devoted followers. We pray as hard as we can. We follow you. We listen to all your teachings. Who's more faithful than us? Why weren't we able to heal that boy? Plain and simple, Jesus explains to the disciples, you just don't have enough faith. Ouch, that hurt. Prayer and faith are completely entwined. It is faith that drives us to talk to God, to tell him our needs, and to express to him how we feel and how we rely on him. Many people wonder, why should we pray to God at all if he knows everything that we need? And wouldn't that be kind of a selfish view of prayer? And if we're only looking to compel God to give us what we want, remember, prayer doesn't change God, it changes us. Especially in cases like we just heard in Mark's gospel where Jesus' followers expected to act with the power of God, but just fell short. All of us, including the disciples, need prayer to maintain and strengthen our relationship with God, to help our 
unbelief. Now, how different are any of us from the father in this story? A very despondent man and worried about his son. And what's he in the midst of? Chaos. Large crowds and the disciples arguing with scribes. And all he wanted to do was seek help and healing. He sees Jesus through the crowd and comes to him. And because he has a need and he is hopeful and maybe a little skeptical that Jesus can help. And, of course, Jesus senses the doubt in this man. And how could he not? When the father says to Jesus, but if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus, of course, frustrated with the crowd and the disciples and the Father, and I love the sarcasm. He says, if you can. Following that, he explains, all things are possible for one who believes. So the Father cries out, I believe, help my unbelief. And Jesus accepts the man's confession and extends mercy on that boy. Thankfully, we have a God that hears our prayers, and even when our faith is imperfect. Here lies the problem, us. Something is holding us back. We must trust Jesus. We must believe in the word. We need to strengthen our belief to do away with the things that separate us from God. This emphasis on prayer that Jesus is talking about shows that faith only works in the context of a relationship, a continual relationship with God through prayer. We just can't make a single token decision to follow Jesus, then sit back and think we'll forever enjoy the benefits of his empowerment. Typical thoughts of many folks today regarding the church is, well, I've gone to church before, and I know about Jesus. I heard of him. He's born on Christmas, right? And, well, by the way, I'm a good person, and Jesus loves everybody as far as I understand, so why do I have to keep going back just to give them my money? Or, and then there's some folks that wait for trouble in their lives to arise, and then they reach out to God and seek God, and they wonder, why isn't he answering my prayer, and why does he let bad things happen to me and everyone else? Don't you just want to shake your head and scream when you hear things like that? There is no way that we can absorb all that the Lord has to offer in one city. Nor could we ever try to understand God's ways. Now, going back to my automotive roots, we just don't have the low capacity to hold that much strength, love, and knowledge. It's like us trying to be some sort of spiritual circuit capacitor. Charge me up once, never need it again. We must be renewed every day. Like the mustard seed, our faith needs to be watered and fed regularly. Now, the verses in Mark 9 are Jesus' explanation and solution to his disciples, following their failure to bring healing to the afflicted boy. Though they were willing, they were just unable to help him. And the father brought his son to Jesus, so I brought him to your disciples, so they, but they just couldn't cure him. Jesus, of course, healed the boy, and they made it a very teachable moment for his disciples and, of course, for us. And when they asked him again why they were unable to help that boy, Jesus plainly stated the problem is because of your unbelief. What? Unbelief is not believing that something can't be done. The disciples surely believed in the power of God to heal because they tried to heal the boy and become healed. But what we find is unbelief is more than not believing. Unbelief is lacking sufficient spiritual ability to get something done. Something's holding you back. Jesus expected they should have been able to bring that uh, healing to uh, that boy. And he went on to explain how faith works by saying that if you have faith as a mustard seed, he did not talk about faith as the size of a mustard seed. He talked about faith as a mustard seed. Think about that. Faith in God is something that must grow and develop like a muscle or a mustard seed. Paul told us in 2 Thessalonians, we are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is fitting, because your faith grows exceedingly and the love of every one of you all abounds towards each other. Muscles grow and develop from exercise and good nutrition. Your faith in God grows the same way. But what holds you back from growing your unbelief? Fear? Anxiety? Laziness? Afraid or worried that you'll be ridiculed by others for following Jesus? Afraid and apprehensive that following Jesus is hard and I might not measure up because, well, I did a lot of bad things in my life and I turned away and I'm not sure that he's even going to welcome me back. Or maybe simply you're just not sure how to pray or you think that God just might be too busy for him, for me. Or maybe a hundred other reasons. 
Listen, in going through life, as we all know, we all experience fear, anxiety, and apprehensions at some point over lots of things, big and small. But when life gets to be an ongoing struggle with this stuff, there can be far-reaching effects if we don't seek guidance. Now let's look at some of the ways fear and apprehension create chaos in our lives and how it impacts others. Our biggest enabler to unbelief, fear, anxiety, confusion, apprehension. These feelings will stifle our thoughts and actions. They will create indecisiveness that results in stagnation and no growth. And unfortunately, we then have to deal with the lost opportunities that come with that type of erosion and incompetence in our lives. And then what happens? The downward spiral begins. Who is our worst enemy other than Satan that feeds us these thoughts? Us. We can ourselves be the largest roadblock to God's plans for us. If we yield to negative emotions and self-doubt, we cannot achieve the goals that he has in mind for us. The lack of confidence in ourselves that is driven by fear and anxiety can certainly lead to falling in destructive habits and unfaithfulness. To numb the pain of overbearing distress and foreboding, we like to turn to those destructive habits for temporary and artificial relief. Then, with all that turmoil going on, it absolutely steals away the peace and contentment in your life that you're chasing. When we're regularly afraid or fearful, our lives become centered on pessimism, gloom, and the things of earthly desires. These things will certainly separate us from God. But look, take heart, never fear. Though Jesus, God did not really promise us an easy life, but through his sacrifice of body and blood, our salvation is paid for. And with that, we are welcome to live with him till eternity in our heavenly reward. How much better does it get than that? If we live in fear and anxiety and try to fix things on our own, we most likely won't experience the abundance that he offers. Now look, take comfort in this as well, that our Heavenly Father feeds the birds of the air and clothes the grass with the splendor of lilies. How much more then will he care for you and me or made in his image? Our only concern should be to obey God and leave all the consequences to him. And if you follow me on Facebook, every day I put down, I tell you, pray constantly, let God do the worrying. When you feel fear begin to rise, ask yourself these following questions. Has God ever failed me in the past? Does he promise to meet all of my needs according to his will? Does he keep his promises? If we read the Bible and study the word, we'll find countless stories of God's faithfulness through prayer. One example, the Apostle Paul, who lived through persecution and pain and all kinds of terrible circumstances. Yet he was able to make the bold declaration that God weaves it all together for the good of his followers. This testifies to the fact that for those who trust in him, God turns every difficulty, loss, and separation into something beneficial. St. Paul also instructs us in 1 Thessalonians, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Whenever we read in Scripture, whether it's a story about Abraham or Sarah or Job or Hannah or David or Isaiah or Jonah or John or Paul, and the list goes on and on, New Testament, Old Testament, we see God's constant love and care for his people. Through prayer and his word, a lamp is provided that gives us clear guidance when circumstances are bleak. Having a relationship with our Lord through word and prayer offers the best direction that we'll ever find. And when we pray upon our troubles and incorporate prayer into our life's routine, we can ask Jesus to help us grapple with any of our struggles, believing his light will chase away our darkness. We need to strengthen our unbelief through prayer, which will help us grow our belief in the one who saved us. Now, God never intended that we should be left to pray on our own. So what did he do? He gave us the Holy Spirit to instruct, inspire, and illuminate our hearts and minds. Now let's think about the ways that the Holy Spirit helps us in our prayer life. First, he prods us to pray. Have you ever felt a strong sense that you needed to spend some time with the Lord and maybe you're not even sure why? Well, that's the Spirit convicting you. He has many reasons for doing this. He knows that when we need strength because of an imminent difficulty or Sometimes he encourages us to confess sin so our fellowship with the Father isn't hindered. 
Second, the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. There are times when we just don't know how to pray. And a good example would be when sorrow, helplessness just overwhelms us to the point that words are impossible to speak, even to the Lord. Thankfully, when all we can do is cry to Jesus, the Spirit will lead on our behalf. Now, how should we cooperate with the Spirit's intercession for us? First, we must recognize God's authority, holiness, and glory. Then, we need to submit to his leadership. And finally, we must entrust our future to him, believing that he will bring great good out of negative as well as positive events in our life. Through prayer and submission to the Holy Spirit, we'll discover greater peace and joy. And as we bring petitions inspired by the Spirit, we'll also find new words for praying to the Father. Even more importantly, we will develop a deeper understanding of God's greatness. God, the sovereign ruler of this universe, can be in control if you're in your life if you let him. Let him fertilize the seeds of love planted in your heart and mind through prayer. When you read the word and meditate on it, you will find genuine strength and hope in his promises. And when you take time to reach out and pray to the Lord in good times and in bad, he will be there for you listening. And remember, you need not to measure your faith as the size of a mustard seed, but to look at your faith as a mustard seed that needs to grow and sprout in abundance, strengthening us in our belief. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please stand for prayer. Grant, O Lord, that I may recognize your grace in my life. I pray that I make your will my own and gladly rejoice in it, that I may understand the special purpose of my life with you. I look to courageously carry the cross that you have placed upon my shoulders. Help me to never lose my temper, but always preserve my joy, that the prayers will help strengthen my faith in you, that my faith become deeper my hope stronger, and my love more perfect, that I may seek always your, your consolation, that I may listen to your words and meditate on them all the days of my life, that I may avoid sin and resist temptation, that I may miss no opportunity of doing good for my community, that I may give a good example to others, that I may always be ready to follow your calling, that I desire for eternal life with you, that I may persevere to the end, that one day I will meet you face to face, that your holy name may be glorified in everything I do. Amen. Pray then like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Amen. I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, Son of the Father from eternity, and true man born of the Virgin Mary is my Lord. At great cost, he has saved and redeemed me, a lost and condemned person. He freed me from sin, death, and the power of the devil, not with silver or gold, but with his only innocent suffering and death. All this he has done that I may be his own and live under him and his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness, just as he has risen from the dead and lives eternally. This is most certainly true. Lord God, you've sent your Son to help us to strengthen our faith in you. Let us use the lessons your Son has taught us to believe in you always. In trouble. In sadness. In despair. In grief. 
in anger, in confusion, Lord, I believe, but help my own in repentance. Lord, I believe, but help my own Lord, help us to accept that your word is true in our world. We pray that we will always trust in you as our everlasting Lord and Savior. Lord, we do recognize that we cannot trust our own understanding. Help us to overcome our unbelief. And remember, you are always with us. Amen. Please be seated for next hymn. Rise you're able for the prayers of the church. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, we believe, help our unbelief. Sustain us through the many troubles and trials of this world. When unclean spirits afflict us and those that we love, revive our trust in you. Lord, in your mercy, Lord God, Heavenly Father, you have given your beloved Son the tongue of one who was taught, that he may know how to sustain with a word those who are weary, prosper in every place that the preaching of your gospel. By your word, enable your pastors to proclaim the word which clarity and joy, and by the same Spirit, 
Open the ears of your children to believe it with the gladness and action, Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, guard the tongues of our governing authorities, especially our president, our governor, our mayor, and legislators, that they may stumble, they may not stumble in what they say, but speak wisely, leading according to your will. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, you have promised that all things are possible for one who believes. In such faith, we bring before you our fellow members, Marie, Cindy, and Bud, our homebound Carolyn and Michelle, our military Joey and Alex, family and friends of our congregation, Andrew, Charlie, Pauline, Josh, Sherry, Reverend Green, Reverend Jorg, Pastor Rickus, Linda, and Michelle. And all others in, their, in our need, asking you to grant them health and healing Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, we know that your son is near in his holy supper, giving in his body and blood his saving righteousness for the forgiveness of sins. Grant repentance and faith to all who come to his table, that they may welcome him with joy, praying, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, Heavenly Father, we gratefully remember the sufferings and death of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, for our salvation. Rejoicing in his victorious resurrection from the dead, we draw strength from his ascension before you, where he never stands for us as our own high priest. Gather us together from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful of the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us, for you alone, we give all glory, honor, and worship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let's pray. Lord, our Lord, how incredible and magnificent is your name in all the earth. Your, spoke, your voice spoke the word of light, and light was given. Your heart shouted hope and love, and creation was born. Your tears cried torrents for your errant people, and your prophets boldly stepped forward to proclaim your presence. Your love streamed down, and Jesus the Christ came to us to heal, teach, guide, and bring us to you. Your power hovered over us like a mighty flame, inspiring us to be your witnesses. How magnificent and wonderful you are, O Lord. We need to let go of disappointments and fear and open our hearts to receive your love and blessings for us. The past we cannot change. We can reflect on all that has happened and move on into a new relationship with you. Let the light of your love shine on us, that we may feel and know your powerful presence with us. Let the light of your love shine in us, that we may be encouraged to use our gifts and talents to serve and encourage others. And let the light of your love shine through us, that others may come to know you and love you as we do. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Go from this place, not into darkness, but into the light of God's eternal, inspiring love. And go to be with those who bring you peace, love, hope, and joy. And remember that God will always be with you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A closing hymn, one of our favorites, of course, How Great Thou Art.
service is ended, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And remember, pray constantly, let God do the worrying.